Compassion is the world's most abundant, most powerful, and most underutilized natural resource. The Charter for Compassion International is working to change that by starting a global movement utilizing compassion as a unifying force in our polarized world. Studies by Dr. James Doty at the Stanford Center of Compassion and Altruism show that compassion improves productivity, innovation, and happiness. On November 11, 2011, Louisville, Kentucky, in conjunction with Mayor Greg Fisher, declared itself a compassionate city and committed to a 10-year campaign to nurture the growth of compassion in the community. Every day, Louisville is becoming an even bigger player in the global compassion movement. By September 2015, the Charter's goal is to have 100 cities, and within those 100 cities, 100 organizations, 100 schools, and 100 businesses, as well as to attract celebrities and world leaders to come together to inspire individuals to make civic engagement an integral part of their lives. We need your help to make this happen. Compassion can enhance economic development in Louisville, as well as solidify us as one of the leading forces in the quest for a better world. Act now for compassion. Adopt a resolution, sign the Charter for Compassion, and help us answer the question, what does compassion want for Louisville? Hi, I'm Heather French Henry, and welcome to Hearts of Gold, a monthly news series that focuses on the positive elements that makes Louisville one of the most compassionate cities in the world. On 11-11-11, Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher signed a resolution declaring Louisville a compassionate city and committing to a multi-year compassionate city campaign, whose mission is to champion and nurture the growth of compassion. The Mayor's Signature Compassion Initiative is his annual Give a Day Week of Service project that promotes volunteerism to help develop and implement Louisville's citywide campaign for compassion. Mayor Fisher also created the Partnership for Compassionate Louisville, which is co-chaired by Tom Williams, an attorney with Stoll, Keenan and Ogden, and Brenda Frank, his special assistant. And here joining me today is Mayor Greg Fisher. Mayor, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Well, great to be here, and I'm delighted that we have a show talking about all the positive things going on in the world. That's right. You know, positiveness is uh, so underrated. We need more of that, and Louisville does a great job with having wonderful positive elements to talk about. One of these elements, of course, is compassion. Right. From, I think, in your childhood, you were inspired uh, by compassion and, and growing. You added compassion as one of the pillars in your administration. Talk to me about why you did that. Well, when I took office, and it was about four years ago or so, uh, I'm a business guy. It just happens to be mayor. So any great company should have some values that guide it, and the city should be the same thing, and sometimes they're not explicit. So as I was thinking about what are those values that are going to be driving the administration, kind of the lens through which we make our decisions, I came up with three. Uh, the first is a city of lifelong learning because when you go to any city where you see a lot going on, people are voraciously learning and it leads to curiosity and entrepreneurship and opportunities. Uh, the second one is let's be a healthy city. So physical health, mental health, environmental health, spiritual health, all these come together to make a great city. And the third one, frankly, I wanted to come up with a word that described people helping each other. So if we had this city where people were learning, they were healthy, then this, what's this third element? And I said, it's compassion, okay? And compassion not in the sense of feeling empathy for somebody, but compassion in the sense of respecting all of our citizens so that I want their potential, their human potential to flourish and to come forth. And so then people say, well, that's odd, you know, for a public official to be talking about compassion and it really where it all came from is I, I've been really blessed. I've got two wonderful parents. And they didn't use the, these words when we were growing up. I'm one of five kids. Uh, but all along I could see my mom just helping people all the time. And my dad would treat everybody the same, no matter who they were. President of a company, uh, Sam the Shoeshine Man. Everybody was the same. So that's the environment that we grew up in that really informed this value of compassion that the city follows. Well, you've also mentioned uh, a very important person in a lot of your speeches and in your administration, and that's the influence of Thomas Merton's life and work on you. Tell us a little bit about that influence. Well, Louisville's traditions and cultures have been affected by Thomas Merton. Uh, we have a tremendous interfaith community here, one of the best in the world as well. But Thomas Merton we've kind of adopted as one of our native sons. This is his 100th birth year. 
and he spent a lot of time in the Abbey of Gethsemane, not too far from here, around Bardstown, and Louisville was his base where he came and went. So there's always been a lot of Thomas Merton fans around here, and of course he wrote uh, extensively for a monk, and he traveled quite a bit once he got the uh, opportunity to do so, so kind of unusual for a monk. But one of his uh, great writings is around the epiphany that he had here in Louisville at 4th and Walnut, it was now Muhammad Ali, in 1958. And so I've always kind of gotten a kick out of the fact this epiphany happened right in the middle of our city. But why not? I mean, it got to well, happen somewhere. Well, you had an epiphany, so it yeah. did it. It influenced you. So this epiphany was, at that time, Fourth and Walnut was the hustling and bustling shopping district of the city. So, you know, a monk's thinking about all these big pictures, you know, how's everything connected? And he said it struck him then as he gazed out upon the hustling, bustling shopping mall of Louisville at that time, as he said, that all people are interconnected. We're all interdependent dependent. And if only we could see each other the way he saw us at that point in time, which was the sun shining down upon us and illuminating our potential and our faces to everybody. And it's that kind of beautiful metaphor that really represents each person walking around with us every day. And oftentimes we don't stop to look at each other and see people as this tremendous vessel of potential and love and kindness. And so for someone who's thinking about a city and all the elements that go into the city. I mean, just think about that. If your city was full of people that were shining like the sun, you know, exhibiting their potential every day, a city of people helping each other, a city of healthy people in all aspects of health, and a city where everybody's learning all day long. You know, so that's a great place to live. And so that's our city and that's what we're trying to do. Now, is that what inspired you for the give a day program? Well, then a natural question that comes out of some of these things is how do you measure these values? So lifelong learning, education, entrepreneurship, job creation is easy to measure. Uh, the various aspects of health are easy to measure. They're hard to achieve. But how do you measure compassion? So one of the easiest ways to measure it is service, giving time to others. You know, whether it's Muhammad Ali saying service is the rent we pay for living on earth or Martin Luther King talking about everybody can do service, no matter what your station in life. So we launched the Give a Day Week of Service. And the goal for that was to reach out throughout the community with everybody participating from all walks of life and all parts of town, as well as people getting help from all different parts of town at the same time. And we set up what we thought was a really big goal for the first year. I said, let's go for 55,000 people. That's a lot. Because we, Brenda and I were researching, what's the world record for compassion? Well, nobody really knows no. what it is. <laughs> okay. But we thought if we had 55,000 volunteers, we'd declare the world record. Well, in the first year, we had almost 90,000 volunteers. So, and then last year, uh, we had over 150,000 volunteers. So now every year, I declare that we broke the world record for compassion. I use the proclamation powers that I have as mayor <laughs> and proclaim that we are the most compassionate city on the face of the earth. And I say we will help any other city defeat us because we're compassionate people here. So it's a great it, pay it forward Oh, it's uh, been mission, wonderful. And certainly. I can't tell you the stories we hear during Give a Day Week about people helping, why they help. Oftentimes people say, I've always wanted to help and volunteer, but I didn't know how to do it. And when you put that website up there, we work with the Metro United Way on kind of a software package to get volunteers and projects coordinated. They said, you made service easy for me, and it makes me feel great. I'm going to do this again. Oh, that's wonderful. It's wonderful to be able to give people a, a purpose and a way to give back. A lot of people do ask, how can we help? Right. How can we be involved? And anytime you get people to reach out in their community, certainly that's a great thing. And I, and I want to say, you know, one of the objectives during Give a Day or anytime we bring people together is I like to see people from different parts of town come together on a project because so often we think we're divided. Okay, and one of the things we all know and learn but don't often think about is we are interdependent. And this was one of Thomas Merton's main themes. So when you come together on a project and you see somebody that you've never known before, but all of a sudden you're helping clean a place or, or build a place or reading to kids together, that common experience then bonds you together. So I don't see you as somebody from the South, the East, or the West, or a different skin color or nationality. I see us as humans together on this project, and that is what makes our city strong, and it's important. I mean, look at the challenges, for instance, that Ferguson, Missouri had, and a lot of cities after the, some of the violence and tragedies that took place in the latter, latter part of last year. I said there was limited social muscle. If people feel disconnected 
if they don't feel connected to the power structure or to the economy, then you see them lose hope. And then sometimes that leads to violence in cities. So that's why it's so important for a city to constantly be working on safe and healthy neighborhoods and compassion and explicitly bringing people together to do things. And then good things happen from that. Well, you know, the word community in the Webster's Dictionary means joint ownership. It means that we're all responsible for the community around us. Um, and like you said, those divisions go away because we are all responsible for that one big community. Right. So it's an important message certainly to get out. Now, we understand that you signed this particular charter, this right. International Charter for Compassion, on a very interesting day, mm -hmm. which was 11-11-11. Right. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out, of course, that that is Veterans Day. Right. Um, was there any correlation um, that is a great compassionate day to, to sign an international charter for compassion. Well, for all the reasons you just put forth, and I, and I think compassion and citizenship are intertwined. Uh, a lot of people forget what it is to be an American citizen, and I think you have responsibility. You know, one is to yourself, so you take care of yourself so you can take care of your family. Two is your employer, so that you add value and they receive value. But the third is do something for the community for, for which you expect nothing in return because that's your responsibility. Oftentimes those are acts of compassion, that's citizenship. Now, it says here that 75 companies, schools, and groups have now signed on to the Charter for Compassion. How, how do you sign on to, uh, for that Charter of Compassion? Well, you can go online. It's the International Charter for Compassion. We're the largest city I think in the world, I know in the country that So people look it. at Louisville as a blueprint for oh, how to be this People come from all over the country to learn about our work in compassion. I've spoken about it extensively on the national stage. The United States Conference of Mayors awarded this with the most livable big city in the country because of the work we do on compassion and our interdependence theme. Uh, so no, it's very important. It's a simple concept. But a lot of public uh, officials are uncomfortable talking about these kind of ethics around compassion and kindness and love. Uh, I think they're the most important things to talk about because they form the foundation then for us to work together and create opportunities for our cities. And those opportunities are then what give people the platform for their potential to come forth, whether it's through economic sense or through a neighborhood sense. But it's important that we continually talk about why we exist together. People are moving to cities. It's important that we can live together, that we're compassionate, that we're healthy, you know, that we're lifelong learners. Got to keep talking about the key, key values. And that's what's important about this show is that we're going to be able to provide so many people out there with access to some great positive elements of Louisville that they can be involved in to become a member of that compassionate community by giving back without expecting anything in return and right. paying that uh, that great uh, work of faith forward so we can keep creating more compassionate generations. It's right. all about passing it on, right? Well, it is, and we're all born that way, right? This is what little, little kids want to hug. They want to be loved, <laughs> and then somehow it goes out of us. So all we're trying to do is just rem remind people who they naturally are. Are there any words of advice that you would give uh, parents in raising children today um, in how to raise compassionate children for a compassionate tomorrow? Well, it's just the little things, right? I mean, uh, first off, are you, uh, do you have good manners, <laughs> right? Are you polite and respectful? Uh, is it a yes, sir, yes, ma'am? Do you open doors for people? Do you respect your elders? You know, these are just basic things that we want to learn toward each other. And then any type of service work that you can start doing in the community, things as simple as, you know, picking up trash, you know, helping people that aren't as fortunate as you are. If, if you don't feel like you have a lot of material goods, you can still do service work. That makes you rich. One of the great things about being in the uh, public official world or government is I get to work with everybody. I learn a lot more from people that don't have material wealth, so to speak. And I've met a lot of people with material wealth that have the poverty of being affluent. Hmm. So we can all come together on these human values and learn from each other. Well, I certainly know as a parent of two daughters, we're constantly trying to get them out to the community to be involved. Um, one of the things I also love are intergenerational projects. Mm -hmm. As you had mentioned, being kind to elders, and that's a very Asian influence ideology where you respect your elders and they become a part of that extended family. So certainly raising children in today's chaos in society, trying to create an avenue where you funnel them into this positiveness right. uh, and that creates a compassion because I truly believe if we lead by example, then we can create compassionate generations for a compassionate tomorrow. 
So thank you so much, okay. Mayor. We certainly appreciate uh, your time. We appreciate your leadership and your uh, passion for Compassion, certainly. Compassionate Louisville holds monthly town hall meetings um, that are open to the public at various venues around the city. Uh, the website that they can, that we can forward people to is www.compassionatelouisville.org. Again, www.compassionatelouisville.org. Thank you so much, Mayor, for My being pleasure. on. Thank you. Absolutely. We'll be right back with another wonderful organization.